Picture this, a big ol' wasteland, like the kind you see in those movies where the hero wears a dusty hat and chews on a toothpick. Jerome Holm, our star narrator, pops up to tell us he's never laid eyes on this place when it was a vibrant green. Nope. Daddy dearest. Ernest. Got to see that magic before the drought turned everything into a crispy critter. Once upon a time, this land was farmer central, with wheat fields stretching as far as the eye could squint. But then, Mother Nature decided she was done playing nice and slapped the whole area with a drought. Now, not even a tumbleweed wants to call this place home. Most folks packed up faster than a cat in a room full of rocking chairs, but not Ernest. Oh no, he's the eternal optimist, convinced this dirt patch just needs a good drink. But guess what? In this world, H2O is more valuable than gold-plated pizza. Yep, people would sooner trade their left sock than share a sip of water. Case in point. Our first scene features two bumbling burglars trying to break into a shack. Ernest plays sheriff and sends one of them on a permanent dirt nap. The other crook tries to pull a fast one, but ends up doing the bullet dance. Jerome, ever the helpful son, thinks he could have saved the day. Bless his heart. Now this shack they were breaking into? It's got an ancient water pump that's about as reliable as a horoscope prediction. So off Ernest and Jerome trot on their trusty mule to beg the watermen for some liquid salvation. These water dealers are like the mob bosses of hydration, only dealing in liquid gold. Ernest's been trying to sweet-talk them into helping for ages, but they're stingier than a squirrel guarding its nuts. On the way home, disaster strikes. The mule takes a tumble and breaks its leg. Ernest, with a heavy heart and a heavier trigger finger, puts the poor critter out of its misery. Back home, it's mealtime, and Sis Mary's serving up a feast fit for, well, not much, really. Water's scarcer than compliments at a bald man's convention, so they're washing dishes with soil. Bon appétit. Next day's adventure? A trip to the auction house, where Ernest sets his sights on a fancy new toy. A robotic carrier called Simulate Shadow, or Sim for short. Beats a horse and buggy, right? But hold on to your hats, folks, because there's drama brewing hotter than a jalapeno in a sauna. Turns out, Flem, the auctioneer's son, is getting cozy with Mary behind Ernest's back. Cue the soap opera music. Then there's poor old mom, wired up like a Christmas tree in the nearby hospital. Jerome spends some quality time with her, while Ernest and Catherine share a teary goodbye before parting ways. On the road again, Ernest decides to quench his thirst with a gulp of gasoline because, well, why not? But wait, there's more. They stumble upon a family in need, with a baby up for sale like it's a flea market for infants. Ernest, being the stand-up guy he is, offers to help them out with water instead of buying the kid. Turns out, Robbie, the desperate dad, knows a little too much about Mary and Flem's love affair. Drama alert. Back home, Ernest plays detective and confronts Mary about her late-night escapades, only to be met with teenage angst and rebellion. Ah, family dynamics. Ain't they a hoot? So Ernest, the master of parenting techniques, decides that locking his rebellious daughter, Mary, in her room and nailing her windows shut is the way to go. Ah, the classic approach of freedom with a side of isolation. Then, surprise, surprise, Ernest and Jerome wake up one fine morning to find their prized possession, Simulate Shadow, or Sim, for those on a first-name basis, missing from its cozy shed. Somebody's been naughty and swiped it. Ernest, always quick on the trigger, decides it must be Flem, the neighborhood troublemaker. Off he goes, ready to give Flem a piece of his mind, only to find out the scoundrel's gone mountain trekking in a truck. Ernest then goes looking for him to the waterman. But wait, it gets better. Ernest, determined to get to the bottom of this, marches off to the waterman to find Flem, only to end up getting knocked out cold. Talk about adding insult to injury. When he wakes up, he's accused of stealing their precious supplies. Ernest, bless his heart, tries to reason with them, but their leader, Caleb, decides to settle things the old-fashioned way, with a good old brawl. Ernest manages to give Caleb a run for his money before legging it with his trusty rifle. But lo and behold, on his way back home, Ernest stumbles upon Flem snoozing on the roadside like he owns the place, with Sim chilling by his side. It's pretty clear who's been up to no good. Ernest, not one to let bygones be bygones, decides to take matters into his own hands, literally. Cue the hostage situation and a good old-fashioned cowboy showdown. But Flem, being the smooth talker he is, manages to sweet-talk Ernest into sharing some of that precious water. It's like a buddy comedy, only with a lot more tension and a lot less laughter. As they sit there, sipping water and shooting the breeze, Flem tries his best to weasel his way out of trouble, but Ernest ain't having any of it. Just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, Flem decides it's time for a plot twist. He whacks Ernest on the head with a rock, ties him up, 
and starts playing judge, jury, and executioner. Talk about a double cross. Cut to Mary, eagerly awaiting her knight in shining armor. Flem, who rolls up on his motorbike like he's the hero of the day. She jumps into his arms faster than you can say daddy issues. Meanwhile, poor Jerome's left wondering where the heck his dad disappeared to. All he finds is Sim, abandoned on the roadside like a discarded toy. When he finally tracks down the waterman, they drop the bombshell. Ernest's gone to that big water pump in the sky. And guess who they blame? Yep, Sim. Because why not, right? Fast forward to Ernest's funeral, where everyone's mourning the loss of the man, the myth, the legend. Catherine and the kids are bawling their eyes out, and Flem, the newfound family mentor, is trying to keep it together. But wait, there's more. Flem, in a surprising turn of events, spills the beans about Mary's bun in the oven and professes his undying love for her. Jerome, in a shocking display of acceptance, decides to embrace their twisted love story. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Flem visits the watermen and asks them to help get water to Ernest's land. Caleb thinks it's funny at first, but gets angry when Flem says it's his fault Ernest died. Flem also shows Caleb a knife with his name on it, found near Ernest's body. Worried about being blamed, Caleb agrees to move water to their field. Buckle up, because things are about to get wilder than a rodeo with a stampede of angry chickens. So, picture this. The land's finally getting a sip of water, and everyone's happier than a pig in a mud bath. Flem, our resident workaholic, decides it's time to put that water to good use and grow some wheat. Fast forward a few months and bam, we've got a wheat field so big it could make a scarecrow's head spin. But hold on to your hats, because Flem's got more tricks up his sleeve than a magician at a kid's birthday party. He goes and ties the knot with Mary, turning Ernest's house into a full-blown love nest. Talk about cozy family dynamics, but oh no, here comes trouble in the form of dear old dad, Sam, and his bank buddies, ready to rain on Flem's parade. They're waving around threats like they're confetti at a New Year's party, all because of Ernest's mountain of debt. Flem, being the smooth operator that he is, decides to pull a disappearing act with Sim, the trusty machine, in tow. Next thing you know, Flem's off making shady deals with Robbie, the baby-selling enthusiast. But surprise, surprise, things take a turn for the worse when Robbie realizes Flem's up to no good and tries to put a stop to it. Cue the dramatic shootout, with Flem making off with the cash and poor Sim taking a bullet for the team. Talk about collateral damage. But wait, it gets crazier. Sim, damaged but determined, goes into auto mode and hobbles its way back to its maker, Calvin Huyman. Meanwhile, Flem's busy playing banker, paying off debts left and right with the dirty money from his baby-selling escapade. And wouldn't you know it, nobody suspects a thing. Because, well, who needs logic when you've got drama? But here's where things really hit the fan. Sim, on its journey back home, decides to spill the beans like a gossip-hungry grandma. Calvin, the machine's maker, gives Jerome a front-row seat to the show, revealing that Sim's been playing detective with its camera eyes. And what do they uncover? Flem, the mastermind behind Ernest's demise, using Sim as his unwitting accomplice. Jerome's world comes crashing down faster than a Jenga tower in an earthquake. Turns out, Flem tied Ernest to Sim like a sacrificial lamb and sent them on a one-way trip to the Waterman, sealing Ernest's fate. Cue the waterworks, because Jerome's not just crying, he's practically a human waterfall. Jerome returns home in the evening, but decides to play it cool and not give Flem the third degree just yet. But hold on to your hats, because things are about to get weirder than a three-headed chicken. Fast forward to a hunting trip with Flem and Jerome, because nothing says quality family time like aiming rifles at innocent woodland creatures. Jerome, being the savvy squirrel he is, decides to squirrel away the rifle under his bed for safekeeping. You know, just in case he feels like starting a mini-war later. But wait, there's breakfast drama. Jerome casually drops the bombshell that Robbie, the guy who's supposed to be pushing up daisies, called him up. Flem's more confused than a chameleon in a bag of Skittles, accusing Jerome of spinning tall tales. Plot twist alert. Flem receives a letter from none other than Robbie himself, or so it seems. The letter's got Flem's curiosity peaked like a cat with a laser pointer. So he decides to play detective and investigate whether Robbie's still kicking. Fast forward to nighttime antics, where Flem pulls the old I'm off to sell something routine on Mary. Mary, being the ever supportive wife, wishes him luck and tells him not to take too long. Little does she know, he's off to a rendezvous with destiny. But fate has other plans for Flem, 
as he takes a tumble into a pit like a klutz at a circus. Cue the dramatic entrance of Jerome, rock in hand and vengeance on his mind. Flem, realizing he's caught in a trap more twisted than a pretzel, tries to beg for mercy. But Jerome's not having any of it, and he's got a rifle with Flem's name on it. Fast forward again, and it's been two days since Flem became a permanent resident of Pitt City. Mary's worried sick, but Jerome's got a plan smoother than a buttered up banana. He decides to keep Mary in the dark about Flem's unfortunate demise, because who needs transparency in a family, right? But wait, there's a silver lining. With Flem out of the picture, Jerome decides it's time to bring Mama Bear back home. And guess what? They've got the cash to afford it, thanks to Flem's little misadventure. And just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, Jerome decides to wipe the slate clean by erasing all the video memory from Sim. Ah, the joys of family secrets and technological cover-ups. And with that, folks, our little drama comes to a close. Until the sequel, that is.